All right, quick update on waves. Let's talk about what's going on today. So we've got a huge, huge influx of bullish volume. And this is the first good sign we've seen on waves in the longest period of time. We've been bearish on waves for so, so long. We literally got rugged like 81 to 82%. And bear in mind when I say rugged, I don't mean rugged as in the developers just rugged the project. I simply mean that, you, you know what what went on here. I mean, I'm sure all of you know by now, uh, they got accused of being pump, uh, of pumping their own project, being a Ponzi scheme. Their USDN lost its peg to a stablecoin when it came all the way up here. And since then, it's just been super, super bearish uh, for waves. I mean, you zoom out, you see you've got an all-time high accumulation range new all-time high you not only lost your previous all-time high you not only lost your previous all-time high in terms of the candle body close you didn't only lose your 618 of that move you didn't only lose the 200 day but you lost the 786 of this uh, recent impulse so waves honestly the chart it still looks terrible to me like i'm not gonna lie like we're up today sure we're up 16 percent but when you're down almost like 90 percent in you know a, a month or so literally the, the period of like a month just coming into a month and a week now i mean it's, it's obvious to be expected that at some point we're going to have a bounce so what would i need to see for waves uh before i could get bullish well it's very simple continuation and breaking above these four hourly emas and also let's zoom out because we've got an accumulation oh no we don't have an accumulation range we've got this orange box so this was your previous low from this fib the 236 and then what does the top of this correlate to uh it looks like it could be the lows that we put down here let me just draw a fib from low to high uh, from high to low rather to make sure that i'm not missing no okay so yeah we're, we're definitely just drawing from your 236 fibonacci the absolute low that we do need to break above and then obviously you've got your very very tiny level of support here which you know hold for a day or two yeah hold for like two three four days actually so you know this is obviously going to be an area of resistance coming back into it so if you want waves to be bullish very very simple uh it's very very simple today uh ta for this video today i'd simply be looking for it to break back above the 17 dollar vicinity and even then that's still being kind of conservative because you can see this uh one daily ema ribbon is going to be tapering into that price so you could even come up to 17 dollars potentially see a rejection and then you know we could come back down into this box we were previously talking about this big big green rectangle absolutely needing to hold because you can see after after this touch point right here and after this low that we put in the other day there is really absolutely nothing i mean we've got a tiny accumulation range here uh the top coming in at 12 dollars 22 which is where we bounce from but apart from that there's there's literally nothing so we need to see continuation for waves if we do come down to your lower time frames where are the four hourly emas loading into come on emas where are you where are you okay here they are did they load in or did I just not see them? Am I going crazy? Leave a comment below. Did they load in or did I just absolutely not see them? Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I want to show you these four hourly EMAs because it's very important that we acknowledge that we are not out of the woods uh, for waves at this moment in time. So we've got this big run up, right? You can see this entire trend was supported by your four hourly EMAs. On the four hourly EMAs, going to the upside, as you can see, this entire rally, every correction, was put perfectly back into the EMAs. What happened the second you broke below the EMAs? All time high confirmed and we started breaking down. Looking at this on the four hourly time frame, you can basically see this entire downtrend was 100% supported by your four hourly EMA ribbons. We broke down, somewhat back tested it, didn't really come too close to it. Here you can see perfect back test rejection, 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 rejection and once again rejection here i mean if we zoom in let's see where this came up to this came up to your second to last moving average on the ema ribbon so it came into the oh no sorry the the 55 ema no not uh let me see let me see let me see it must be your 50 ema so we never managed to get above your 50 uh 50 day or 50 moving average basically on the uh the four hourly time frame so 
looking at this, we've come up to it. We even came up to the um, the long term fib at the top here, and we've got rejected. So if you, like I said, if you were looking for potentially an area where this could get bullish, I would definitely argue the top of this four hourly fib, a breakout and a back test of around fourteen dollars and sixty cent, would make waves bullish in the short term technically you can also see your squeeze momentum indicator is starting to head to the upside however i would like to highlight this is head headed to the upside twice now since our all-time high at the all-time high we were here you had one fake out two fake out this was a pretty big fake out as well from this low to this high it was a fairly decent pump up how much did we come up we came up about 17 percent, and bear in mind that is the exact price uh, we are up from the bottom now. I mean, maybe not 17%, maybe a tiny bit more. 23% uh, to the top of these EMAs and 17% from where we are now. More more like 18%. So, like I said, 4 hourly time frame, if you're really gearing to make a trade on this, $14.60, the breakout would make it bullish in the short term. However, zooming out to a more macro time frame, I, I really don't think I would... Well, personally, first of all, I wouldn't be trading waves uh, in the first place. Just to be fully transparent, I do not hold waves. I do not want to trade waves. After the USDN lost its stablecoin status, I don't think I'm going to be touching waves. That's just how it is. Uh, I, I'm really not interested in trading projects like this. However, you know, if I was looking to trade this, I'd be fairly conservative, number one, while we're waiting for the Federal Reserve news. Number two, I would be conservative until you do hop over at least your first fib. Bear in mind, we've had a bounce you're not even above your first Fibonacci, and your first Fibonacci on this move isn't even going to come in until we're at $20. So we're at $14 now. Personally, if I was looking to buy this, I'm a pretty conservative trader. I'd want to see both your 786 flip. I'd want to see your uh, four hourly moving average get flipped around this region. I'd then want to see a break above the first Fib. I would then want to see a break above your 786 Fibonacci and you'd also be above your 200 day moving average and at which point you'd also be above your daily EMA ribbons. Until that happens, I am sitting on the sidelines. Bear in mind, you might be thinking, you know, why on earth would you want to buy the breakout at $20? Uh, if you think the bottom could be near at $14. Well, there's for a, a very specific reason for that. When I started making video on waves, we were up here at $64. People asked me, are you going to DCA at $36? And I was saying, no, I'm looking for a confirmed bounce on this trend line. Otherwise, I'm sitting on the sideline. So we didn't hold $36. We broke down and I said, OK, I'm still on the sidelines. On this time, I want to see this double 618 get bounced on. And if we don't bounce, if we don't confirm that we're bullish down here at $28, then I sit on the sideline. What happened? We broke down. So from 36 to 29, we broke down. At this point, I said, okay, potentially, maybe last line in the sand is your 786 Fibonacci coming in at $20. If we do not hold this region, if we don't come down and have a strong bounce, then I'll be sitting on the sidelines. And what am I saying now that we've come down to $11? Well, I'm saying once again, I am sitting on the sidelines until the trend proves itself to be bullish. Now, Bear in mind, there's a very specific reason for this. If you bought the exact bottom of the last dip, and I'm talking if you bought the bottom to the exact cent, you'd be buying for literally the exact same price that I'm going to be buying on, on a breakout target after we've confirmed the trend. And the beauty of this is sitting on the sidelines means that you miss out on all of this dopey downwards movement. And as soon as the trend starts, you can jump in you can be euphoric, you can take your trades, make your bets, do whatever you want to do. And you don't have to sit that long on the sidelines while your hair's going grey staring at the chart every day, wondering when is waves going to reverse, when is waves going to reverse. We simply look at the chart, we wait for the reversal, we take a pick once we've broken out from a, a bullish stance, once the market flips back into a bullish stance. And until that happens, we sit on the sideline. If we get lower price targets, we get lower price targets. If we break down and we come back down to these lows, what am I going to be saying to you when we're down at $8? Can you guess 
I'll be saying I'm not going to DCA down here, but if we do have a strong bounce and we break out of whatever these EMA ribbons are at that time, then I'd be looking to make a trade. And if we did come down here, the breakout could be down here at $12. So the point is, the longer we sit on the sidelines, the longer we let this trend play out for, the cheaper the price targets become. That's really all I've got. The trend is your friend until the end. Waves has been absolutely slaughtered in the past month or so. They've had tons of news calling them Ponzi schemes. They've had a ton of bad press. They've had tons of people leave the market. You know, you look at your oscillators and you just see the money that flew out of this was disgusting. It seems like most retail traders left. We came down to 0.2 on the money flow indicator. On the RSI, we came down to 24. So I wouldn't touch waves with a 10 foot barge pole. I really make these videos for those of you who are still interested in waves. But, like I said, you know, I'm very honest on my channel, I don't like to sugarcoat things, I'm not going to say everything's bullish, just so I can fall in favour with everyone with everyone who watches my channel. I say my opinion on the market, sometimes it's bullish, sometimes it's bearish, and let's be honest, look at this chart, this chart looks terrible. We've got a landslide, and we've got a baby bounce, like look at this, look at this pullback down here, and you've got people getting out of bed over this. Think about it this way. If you throw a human body off the top of the Eiffel Tower and it goes, it's probably going to go boom before it goes down further. So this could be a dead cat bounce. It might not. The point is, we said this at $36. We said this at $30. We said it at $20. And we're saying the same. We said the same thing at 12 and we're saying the same thing at 14 we are in a bearish trend. I plan on sitting on the sidelines. I've been very patient on waves. I haven't been DCAing. And because of that, we have a fat, fat discount when we finally do break out. If we finally do break out. And the beauty of it is, if we never break out, we'll never enter a trade. Meaning that we'll never have to worry about losing profits on this one. That is all I've got for waves. I need to record some other videos. If you do like the waves content, the best way to let me know is leave a like and a comment down below saying you want more of it. Like I said, all I've got for you today, cowboy out, not financial advice, and most importantly, peace.